All right, so a heater is constructed basically by having a resistor embedded inside of an aluminum casing. And we're going to say that the material that makes up the resistor itself is negligible relative to the amount of material of the case. Okay, so we're going to treat it as if it's like this block of aluminum um, in terms of its uh, specific heat value. All right, and we know the resistance value that's uh, embedded into that. That heater is then immersed into a bath of ethylene glycol, which is the same type of formula that is typically uh, composes antifreeze that goes into your car. That's just incidental information. Um, the rectangular reservoir has the dimension shown, and after the heater is inserted into the glycol, let's say they both reach an initial equilibrium temperature of 24 degrees C. Uh, once that happens, uh, the heater is then turned on by applying the voltage that's given down here, 58 volts. Um, the heater is left on for a little while, and then the voltage is taken off. After the heater is turned off, the heater and the ethylene glycol will then eventually reach an equilibrium temperature of 73 degrees C. And we're going to assume that a negligible amount of heat is absorbed by the styrofoam reservoir or goes somewhere else besides in the bath. Um, we need to know how much time the voltage was applied to the heater to make all of this happen. Okay? Where shall we start? Okay, we could start with some volumes. Okay, that would be fine. Or let me actually do this one a little different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually put all the volumes directly into my main equation. We can kind of do all of this with just one big fat equation. I'll, I'll show you that, okay? Uh, before I do that, let me actually just show you where this comes from, right? Change in internal energy. We are always used to seeing this as mass uh, times your specific heat times your delta T, but you can express mass another way, right? How can you express mass? Okay, volume, which a lot of times I'll use a V with a little hash through it like this to talk about volume, times density, which a lot of times I'll use the Greek letter rho to talk about density, uh, times C sub P uh, times delta T. So if we can come up with expressions of volume and expressions of density, then we can just put all of this into one big expression and uh, we don't need to do a bunch of extra steps. All right, so let's do that. Our basic equation that we're going to do is the change in internal energy of the ethylene glycol. Let me just, um, I'll uh, abbreviate that EG. Okay, plus the change in energy, okay, of the what? Aluminum is equal to what? Okay, total energy. And why is there a total energy change? Because you're putting energy in, you're adding energy through the heater, and that is based on knowing that there's a particular resistance value, right? 32 ohms, as well as what? Voltage value of 58 volts. And what other piece of information is important to know how much total energy change there is? Time, right? Power times time is what we're going for. And so the time um, is the piece that we don't know yet, right? That's what we're going to be solving for is the amount of time that we must have been putting the heater on there. Okay? All right. So let's actually start building this. How do I find the change in internal energy of the ethylene glycol? First, the volume, right? So the volume would be A times B times H, right? So A is 7 centimeters. B is 11 centimeters. H is 5 centimeters. Okay? But that's volume. What else do I need? Density. What's the density of ethylene glycol? Based on this right here, density of ethylene glycol 
is 1.11. Okay, and that's going to be in grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, now when I get around to using my C sub P, which is the next thing that I have in my little expression, right? I did volume, I did density, C sub P is next. What are the units of C sub P that I have? Joules per kilogram, not joules per gram, right? So joules per kilogram degrees C which means I might want to add in here a factor that allows me to come up with kilograms relative to grams. Okay? And then I can put in my C sub P value, right? Which is 2360 uh, joules per kilogram degrees C. All right, so that is my first delta E term. Okay. Oh, change in temperature. Thank you. Someone reminded me I haven't put in my change in temperature. So what do I need to put in for my change in temperature? Okay. The in, right. So the initial temperature is 24 degrees C, and the final temperature is 73 degrees C. So my change in temperature is going to be 73 degrees C minus... 24 degrees C. Okay, so there's all of that term. How about the next one? I'm going to put it down on the line below down here. Plus what? Okay, 2 centimeters times 2 centimeters because that's C times C, right? C by C by D and D is 4 centimeters. Okay, what's the density of aluminum? 2.71 grams per cubic centimeter. We we'll want to convert that one as well to kilograms, so we put in a kilogram per thousand grams. Then what? Okay, the specific heat of aluminum is 905. And the units on that would be joules per kilogram degrees C. Okay, and then what else do I need there? Change in temperature. What's the change in temperature of the aluminum? It has the same change in temperature because we have the same initial and the same final for this particular problem. Okay, so 73 degrees C minus 24 degrees C. All right, and what does this all equal? Okay, power times time, right? And the expression of power that might be most useful to us is based on voltage and resistance. And that expression of power that uses voltage and resistance would be what? V squared over R. Okay, so 58 volts squared over 32 ohms times time, which is the only thing we don't know. Okay. So now we enter all of this into the calculator. Okay, now let me show you something that's kind of cool here. Can we factor any any out or factor out any common terms? Sure, why not? We could factor out the change in temperature. What else could we factor out? My conversion from kilogram or from grams to kilograms. Right? So I can factor those things out. Uh, which I'll let me just go ahead and do that here. So 73 minus 24 over 1,000, right? Factor that out, and then I'm going to multiply this by the rest of my expression, and I'll go ahead and, and put in my uh, power term over here. So 58 uh, squared over 32 times time. Okay, let me go back in and fill in 
what I left out right here. What, what did I leave out? 7 times 11 times 5 times 1.11 uh, times 2360. Okay, I think that takes care of all the terms uh, that I had there. So then I need to add 2 times 2 times 4 times 2.71 times 905. And I think that does it. Okay, so I am ready to solve this. To solve it, you hit Shift Solve and hit Equals. Turns out to be 488.38 or so, 0.4 we'll say. What are the units that that should be? Okay. We didn't do anything special to try to change the units, and the expression that I have for powers is based on joules per second, right? So this comes out in seconds. Okay. Is that the uh, nature of the answer that's given there? Okay. What do I need to do to get that to be in minutes? Okay. Multiply it essentially by a minute per 60 seconds. Okay. So, by the way, when you finish this with your calculator, that number 48.3, what, 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 right, all that stuff is, is now stored into the variable x. So if I go in here and call x and hit equals, you'll see it's already in there. Okay? So all I got to do is now take x and divide it by 60. And I get 8.14 or so. minutes. So the answer is A.